what is called thinking. If we're not yet thinking. Again, Derrida says, what does he mean we're still not thinking? But nonetheless, thinking is inextricably linked to a call, to taking a call, which seems to be a little disconnected and unhooked here. But we need to understand, I think, what she, she says, we're alone with ourselves. And this is why I wanted to say something earlier about responsibility. You are never responsible enough. And responsibility, Derrida does give an image of that, even if you're the only one standing up against an outrage, a wrongdoing, a scene of persecution, you stand, you stand alone. And that standing alone is something that she seems to be getting at, even if standing alone means in the company of a friend. So um, as Judith suggested, the aloneness is sometimes populated. Nonetheless, there's something about standing alone and solitude that can also collapse or lapse into loneliness and, and isolation that she's concerned about. So perhaps, Larry, you can help us think about the different moments and intensities of aloneness, which seem to be crucial to, to the thinking that, that has been introduced to us today. Um. I understood uh, the invitation as an assignment, uh, an assignment to uh, see whether it would be possible to introduce a psychoanalytic reading um, just now of the excerpt that we have before us um, from the Arendt text. And um, having found that opening uh, for a psychoanalytic reading, whether it would be possible um, to uh, discover some trace uh, of the relationship to Heidegger as um, a submerged problem uh, in the excerpt. Um, there are certain areas uh, in this excerpt where we notice that it's um, difficult, at least within this immediate frame, for uh, Arendt to, convincing, to um, maintain the distinction convincingly that could apply to remembrance, for example, but I'm, I chose uh, loneliness, um, the figure of loneliness, uh, also because uh, Melanie Klein uh, wrote as her uh, last essay um, uh, a piece titled uh, On the Sense of Loneliness. So I want to present that as um, uh, uh, a parallel document, as it were, on the loneliness uh, that's figured in Arendt. So I'll begin with Arendt briefly, but then I will close uh, with the second part of my assignment, as it were, to suggest where uh, one might detect uh, the relationship to Heidegger uh, in all of this. As you know, Arendt uh, raises the uh, question um, of loneliness as a limit concept or failure of the coupling of selves and thinking. And I quote Arendt on page 100. <clears throat> I mention these various forms of being alone or the various ways in which human singularity articulates and actualizes itself because it is so very easy to confuse them, not only because we tend to be sloppy and unconcerned with distinctions, but also because they invariably and almost unnoticeably change into one another. But just the same, I'm still with Arendt, the demonstrable validity of concern for the self as the ultimate standard of moral conduct does not at all hold, we're told, for loneliness and isolation. Solitude is the mode of being alone that Arendt privileges in the silent dialogue of myself with myself called thinking. And I quote again from page 98, solitude means that though alone, I am together with somebody, myself that is. It means that I am two in one, whereas loneliness as well as isolation do not know uh, this kind of schism, this inner dichotomy in which I can ask questions of myself and receive answers. Now, before proceeding to Klein as the, um, 
the one figure from psychoanalysis who devotes so much thought uh, to the sense of loneliness. I just want to uh, throw out a, a historical or um, genealogical um, frame, which is to identify loneliness or Einsamkeit um, uh, conceived as uh, the aberration, or if you prefer, the interpretation of being alone um, as a kind of uh, pre-psychoanalytic uh, diagnosis ever since the 18th century, century really, uh, which was used to identify even um, uh, with regard to a developmental ideology, um, certain extreme severe states of decompensation. Uh, um, that led to hospitalization more often than not. So in On the Sense of Loneliness, uh, Melanie Klein pursues loneliness as inevitable breakup of the therapeutic aim of integrated development. Among the roots of loneliness, Klein finds early paranoid insecurity and the splitting that diffuses it. But the primal defense of splitting in no time leaves both object and ego in bits. Because splitting as egoic defense is only a temporary measure, the ego must come into close contact and to terms with the destructive impulses. In other words, the need for integration arises to mitigate hate by love. Quoting Klein, the ego would then feel safer not only about its own survival, but also about the preservation of its good object. Klein associates loneliness with the longing for understanding without words, which we feel we came closest to in infancy. Where longing is, loss will be too. Thus the sense of loneliness, and I'm quoting, derives from the depressive feeling of an irretrievable loss. We feel that, in the beginning, we were in close contact, unconscious to unconscious, with mother. The good object, the external mother or breast, exists or little one dies. Internalization follows as the one continuity shot you can rely on. There may never again be a good object on the outside. But we can now haul actual absence or loss to the inner world to be born. Thus, the cut of loss that cuts deepest threatens the internal lifeline to the good object. While lack of integration cannot but be extremely painful, the very progress of integration brings in its train new problems. In seeking integration as safeguard against destructive impulses, one fears that integration itself re-releases these impulses threatening the good object and the good parts of the self. While undergoing integration in analysis, patients will express the pain in terms of feeling lonely and deserted of, and I quote, being completely alone with what to them was a bad part of the self. Because permanent integration is not possible, one cannot understand or accept one's own emotions. This is Klein's conclusion. One feels unattractive, one is left alone with unattractive feelings, the bad parts of the self. These split off parts or partings projected into other people or animated objects.